You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Discover the wisdom and deep meaning from the everyday experience of your life journey. Welcome to Earth Walkways with your host, Darlene Rollins. Earth Walkways will help you love your life as it is and discover the hidden meanings and messages in everything that unfolds. So please welcome the host of Earth Walkways, Darlene Rollins. Welcome to Earth Walkways. This is your host, Darlene Rollins, and we're coming... BBM Global Network. So I want to greet everyone with blessings and well wishes as we continue in our time of descent together. Um, one of the things I, I see is lots of uncertainty, confusion, and distrust of our institutions. Uh, and I understand. Um, I guess for me, I'm working anyway to uh, focus, uh, let, let that be less important whether I know it's a virus or 5G or a vaccine conspiracy or some other global cabal using or creating it for nefarious reasons, you know, what What for me seems to be the most compelling aspect of its manifestation, which is, you know, what is real, right? Something is here. We don't know what it is and all of that. But um, it, part of that is, is what is its announcement, right? It's, it, it brings with it uncertainty, and so I think of the reason that we should pay attention is to learn how to be with uncertainty in some ways and to, you know, hear, listen to the information, you know, but allow ourselves to rest in not knowing until it's time to know, until we can know. And... You know, it's it's a difficult place to be, and especially if we feel like it's dangerous to wait, right? But I think in this instance, we really are uh, working in a global way to um, face things like uncertainty. And also, there's something in this announcement of the presence of this event that, you know, brings death back on stage uh, you know back on stage of life we we kind of tried to put a backstage of life and so i think that there's some ultimate wisdom in some of this and so the pathwork guide says that this duality between life versus death you know is kind of the, the foundational duality that we're trapped within and that we need to find a way to unify and embrace them both. And so this journey can sort of be done sort of where life forces us to, you know, go where we would ordinarily not go, right? Um, and we still have free will, how we go, right? But there's a way in which right now i think there there is this initiatory aspect on a collective level uh of this event <clears throat> and so for me the virus if it is a conspiracy might be a conspiracy by nature or by god uh, to take us through a collective initiation and i admit i also have little faith in our institutions sometimes and it's easy to find fault with them so I'm working with that and have some ideas at the end of our session here. Uh, my mantra is to try to trust this process. 
um, it's interesting because the full moon falls on 18 Libra, which the Sabian symbol is this, it's a gang of robbers and hiding, right? <laughs> which could be the virus itself or what's behind the virus. And, and yet this full moon opposes the sun in Aries at 18 degrees. And the symbol here is a magic carpet invoking a force of the imagination to bring us to freedom or negatively we could you know be in fantasy and daydream and denial right um, of this initiation that's calling us so you know we want to just ask what are the robbers hiding backstage um, this reel is also uh, a metaphor for us it's a light uh, for us to work with right and explore um, so when the outer out pictures to us sort of the waking dream and in this case it's the waking dream of the collective right we're in mythic time and we can go into a sort of way of exploring it that is this more shamanic way so it's clear to most of us that a return to normal is probably not going to be possible and the future is a very big unknown and we're poised on this edge of a collective initiation so my sense is that this will continue to be a gradual descent with plateaus and then other crises and then we will learn as we go and hopefully bring forth, you know, birth the new cooperative and unified ways and institutions of living that will allow us to move beyond the era of industrialization. But in this program, right before the holy day of Easter, with so is, is more than just a Christian holy day in my understanding, right? It, uh, all of these things are ultimately universal. I want to share some thoughts about this path of descent, which is the path of death and resurrection. And it is the shamanic path. And it is the medicine wheel path of life and death and rebirth. So I follow Father Richard Rohr and his school in Albuquerque, the Center for Contemplation and Action. And they seem to have a clearer understanding of this path and this current collective initiation than other sources. So I encourage you to check them out. Um, and I want to remind people that I'll be offering an Easter Sunday sunrise service at 6 a.m. Easter morning via streaming. So if you want to go to earthwalkways.com events and you'll see the registration for it, it's free. But to get the link, you need to sign up <coughs> based on the security issues that have been happening. And <clears throat> in it, I'm going to be reading the Pathwork story or cosmology that – uh, ex explains this meaning of Easter from the perspective of the fall of the angels and the plan of salvation. And it's a beautiful allegory that has instructions for us today and helps us appreciate the deeper mythical meaning and this path of initiation that was demonstrated so we could maybe have more comfort and understanding. And this is the path of incarnatory experience, and so it, it does, you know, educate us. It does address us directly in these. This is from Father Rohr. He says, suffering is a universal experience occurring across space and time, revealing the big T truth that going down, going through, and going into the unknown can be powerfully transformative. The cross, rightly understood, always reveals various kinds of resurrection. It's as if God were holding up the crucifixion as a cosmic object lesson saying, I know this is what you're experiencing. Don't run from it. Learn from it. As I did. Hang there for a while. As I did, it will be your teacher. Rather than losing life, you will be gaining a larger life. It is the way through. As impossible as that might feel right now, I absolutely believe that it's true. When we carry our own suffering in solidarity with humanity's one longing for deep union, it helps keep us from self-pity or self-preoccupation. We know that we are all in this together. It is just as hard for everybody else, and our healing is bound up in each other's. Almost all people are carrying a great and secret hurt, even when they don't know it. 
This realization softens the space around our overly defended hearts. It makes it hard to be cruel to anyone. It somehow makes us one. So, and then a couple of shows ago, I had brought in Matthew Fox and uh, his book and theology of original blessing, which was really beautiful for this incoming spring moment, which just in the blossoming of, you know, its coming forthness uh, comes into these moments around the uh, equinox. And recognizing and uh, facing this new uh, p- sort of process of a change, of transformation, and sort of a death of the old way that we had been focusing and doing and ongoing and that kind of thing. So um, <clears throat> there's this promise of, of new life, which comes in the beginning. And in my experience, it's very strange. I, I was born on the equinox and I have this experience a lot that I get this like initial, you know, incoming zest and, you know, inspiration and life force. And then there's something that happens that invariably right before my birthday pulls the rug out from under it. Right. You know, and so right before the, the actual initiation spring and then now here we are in this moment of the first full moon after the spring equinox and so that moment right is, is this uh, time frame again where it's it's that sunday after that that is easter and therefore you know this whole process of this new birth into life and already in the very beginning we we face this story this journey this shamanic, you know, process of deepening and of um, going down. And so it's a beautiful kind of symbol that we can all study. And these are my understandings. So you're welcome to have your own. Um, So when we have this symbol of death and resurrection that comes in the very beginning, we also, I think, need to have a foundation of original blessing. And that's what I was talking about in that, that very early part of spring, right? And, and of course, it's in the very early part of creation where God, you know, made things and, and blessed them, said they, that it was all good. And then we kind of got lost and we forgot this <clears throat> original blessing and got lost excuse me, in the sin and salvation kind of theology of the story in the Garden of Eden, right? And and so this fall uh, and descent seems to be a shameful thing, but this is a different understanding of all of this, right? It's, it's a part of the cycle of life. It's a part of the natural healing medicine of life. It's not that we did something wrong and therefore we're supposed to be punished. It's it's more like this brilliance of this process of transformation that is in all of nature and in all of life is, is really what deepens us and opens our hearts and matures us in the ways that will... Uh, you know, allow us to bring our blessings to earth and also, you know, feed the truth of our blessedness, right? You know, so much of our suffering is because we have to prove to everybody else we're okay because we don't know the truth of that in our hearts. And in that competition you know, of proving is, is where we so much have a lot of strife and downfall. So, let's see. I want to um, bring a quote uh, from Matthew Fox in about what he talks about the via negativa. But we're coming to a um, break here, so let me begin that after the break. And uh, this is Darlene Rollins coming to you from BBM Global Network. I'm your host of Earthwalk Ways. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. 
worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations, the kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back. This is Darlene Rollins, your host of Earthwalk Ways, coming to you from BBM Global Network. I guess we were having some bandwidth problems, so I'm hoping that we've got it fixed. And uh, we've been talking about sort of this initiatory path that we seem to be, uh, you know, it's reflecting back to us in the experience that is happening, right, in this collective event, however we want to understand it, I believe. It's best seen as an invitation in in this path of descent, which is not one that we easily go on in the West. So, or for life in general, you know, who, who wants to, you know, be in in a place of struggle or challenge when we can be comfortable and life can be easy, right? So there's a certain desire of the creatureness of ourselves to have things stay the way they are. And so life itself then has to shake things up and has to move us past certain places where we can stay stuck. And a part of this journey, like we, we can find the resilience of this movement that life takes us through, you know, when we can sense sort of the original blessing at the foundation of life and begin to recognize that even in the descents and in the difficult times there's purpose or there's you know uh, some way that it's helping or showing or teaching us so the silver linings as they say in the difficult moments and and as we I think begin to uh, see that we can at least give our best to trying to embrace the whole of the medicine wheel, not only the spring and the rebirth, but also the winter and the, the letting go and the endings. Um, but it's, it is a, a challenge for us. It's naturally a challenge. And so as such, I think it will always be an initiation. And somehow in this time, um, I think the world is has been undergoing sort of this collective initiation. Um, 
and we do not know very well how to undertake that part of the journey. So, you know, Jung himself recognized that Western Christianity lost its descent path, uh, the Via Negativa, you know, some 300 years ago. And then what was substituted was this idea of willpower, right, to control one's feelings. And then what happened was mortifications replaced meditations. And so there's something that happens when the via negativa is ignored. And that also means that the prophetic voice will be silenced, right? Life then becomes superficial, easily manipulated, and ultimately as boring as it is violent. So while the via positiva of the original blessing teaches us the cosmic breadth of living in holy relationship to stars and atoms, to royal persons, and to blessed bodiliness, the via negativa opens us to our divine depths. Most of us naturally avoid these depths, and traditions have distorted them into preoccupations with sin and redemption. But we need the via negativa, we need this depth, this letting go, this, you know, rounding of the circle, uh, this emptying, uh, the silence, the, the being emptied, the pain, the sinking, the nothingness, the rock bottom. It's a part of the journey. And when we are being emptied and letting pain be pain, you know, uh, it allows us to, it takes us to a different shore if we allow it to. So in America, we are largely addicted to anything that helps us avoid pain, from drugs to TV. And yet pain is everywhere and was even before the virus. There was a deep, ineffable, unfathomable cosmic pain. And it needs to be named for what it is so that we can... You know, we can be with our pain, pray our pain, enter into it. For that is the only way that we can resolve pain is by entering into its source. And we must embrace pain and burn it as a fuel for the journey. I like the image of gathering firewood, right? You know, first we need to gather it and hold it to our breast. And then we have to carry it for a little while before we can finally let it go into the sacred cauldron where it generates light and warmth. So pain is meant to give us energy. What kind of energy does this look like? First, it helps us to understand other people in pain. A schooling in compassion. For when a person has suffered deeply, even once, and has owned that suffering, that person can never forget and never fail to recognize the pain of others. Pain is the most legitimate school for compassion that I know of. I was struck by this quote of Doris Day, in this case, her imprisonment, um, but it's a description of, you know, the different kinds of hells, you know, that this pain, any kind of pain can take us to. So the blackness of hell was all about me. The sorrows of the world encompassed me. I was like one gone down into a pit. Hope had forsaken me. I was that mother whose child had been raped and slain. I was the mother who had borne the monster who had done it. I was even that monster, feeling in my own heart every abomination. So, secondly, pain helps us to understand pleasure. The true pleasures in our lives are the simplest and most shareable kind. And pain destroys the illusions of the false and elitist pleasures, and it sensitizes us to what is truly beautiful in life. A third way pain enlivens us and gives us energy is that embarking on pain and making that journey toughens us up. It makes us stronger by testing us and demanding discipline of us that we did not know we were capable of. Sensitivity, which includes sensitivity to beauty, but also to pain, demands strength. The strength of endurance and perseverance. The strength that solitude requires, the strength that vulnerability is about. The strength does not come from willing it or gritting our teeth. It comes from undergoing pain. 
The Song of Songs says that beauty is not learned or valued without the suffering that makes us big enough and strong enough to be proper vessels of the beautiful. Letting pain be pain links us with others. Shared pain is what movements are born from. Liberation begins at the point where pain is acknowledged and allowed to be pain, and from there pain becomes shareable and where possible resolvable. Pain opens us up. Our pain is a cosmic pain. All creatures of the universe suffer pain. Pain unites us. Suffering is built into the birth process of the entire cosmos. It has to do with sacrifice and yielding, receiving and birthing forth. The purpose of letting pain be pain is precisely this, to let go of pain. We are not asked to cling to our pain, to wallow in it, to build our lives around it. By entering into it, we become able to breathe so much freedom from within the pain that the deepest kind of letting go can truly occur. And so, from suffering I have learned this, that who ever is sore wounded by love will never be made whole unless she embraces the very same love which wounded her. It is the blank white banner that the risen Christ holds in Christian art and if it says anything it says love will win, love is all that remains, love and life are finally the same thing and we know that for ourselves once we have walked through death. Love has you. Love is you. Love alone and your deep need for love recognizes love everywhere else. Remember that you already are what you are seeking. Love has finally overcome fear and your house is being rebuilt on a new and solid foundation. This foundation was always there but it takes us a long time to find it. It is love alone that lasts. All you have loved in your life and have been loved by are eternal and true. So these words are coming from Matthew Fox's original blessing uh, about the path of via negativa and letting pain be pain honoring the teacher that pain is. So, and I want to bring us now to understanding also, you know, that like if we're here in this initiation, we're like living in mythic time, right? You know, and in some sense, all time is mythic time. Um, but our time, especially like this, these archetypal events, right? These, this... Uh, journey of the medicine wheel it has different forms and different shapes but you know we're all participating in uh, a life journey kind of experience that to me life is the initiation right that each of us has chosen to undertake and then when we live in mythic times we know we can we can really support and play with reality becoming metaphor right and so the the Guide also says this, that we're always projecting our inner landscape out in front of us and then our experiences are teachers for us. So we're coming to another break and when we get back we'll talk a little bit more about uh, reality as metaphor and how to enter into mythic time. This is your host Darlene Rollins coming to you from BBM Global Network. This is Earth Walkways. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like, it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 Gold Medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Welcome back to Earthwalk Ways. This is your host, Darlene Rollins, coming to you from BBM Global Network. And we're exploring our, our moment, our now, uh, in this kind of understanding and exploration of mythic time, of a kind of collective initiation, of a kind of time when reality becomes metaphor and myth. And so... When we live in that kind of time, we want to allow the recognition of that metaphor and reality. This is shamanic consciousness, right? It's being awakened again on the planet. Uh, it was rejected, you know, for a while with only the rational way of knowing. But there are many ways of knowing, and so when we can recognize the metaphor and reality and then we call on allies of nature's intelligence and and cooperating magic to find a pathway, right, that brings wholeness and balance in a way through the event, you know, for the collective. And so in a sense, we're all these days a legion of shamans, right? And we're all tuning in on this wavelength of experience um, and seeking to understand its message and its meaning on many, many levels. And as we mentioned before, you know, here the sun is taking us on a magic carpet ride to free the imagination and maybe to expose the robbers in hiding. And and then, you know, we're learning to read the signs in the astrology charts. You know, many people are, you know, finding that the dance of the stars in the heavens are really amazingly synchronous with what's happening today. Um, and we're also... Um, you know, talking about the connections, right? We talked last time about the connection in Chinese medicine between lungs and grief. So, and then the full moon was in Libra. Uh, so, 
here we are, you know, another air uh, sign, right? And a sign of balance, right? So I think, again, we're being pointed to this importance of breath and of, you know, like how using the, the breath of life, which is also often connected with the element of the East, you know, like the first breath of the newborn, right? to, to breathe deeply, to sort of savor and take in and, and fully affirm life. Um, and there are many good um, breathing exercises right now that are probably excellent, you know, for... Uh, people to work with at this time, everything from Qigong to um, pranayama kinds of practices. Um, So in the situation where there is also on the astrology chart a really beautiful, uh, one of the lesser planets is sitting on a sign that has a beautiful image that it, it means curtains are blowing in the shape of a cornucopia bringing in fresh air. Now, interestingly, the the little planetoid that's um, in this position is the goddess of discord. <laughs> so, uh I think that's an interesting juxtaposition, right? That, uh, but it does seem like that's one of the the prayers that we have. Like, may this, may this time, you know, uh, allow the winds of change to bring in a cornucopia of, you know, fresh air. So, we want to practice breathing. And noticing as we breathe, right, uh, be using the breath to bring us into awareness of the body, which is, of course, uh, how tight it is, how restricted it is, how heavy it is right now is going to restrict the breathing, right? And so if you want to just pay attention to how your breath is in this moment, you can, you know, you can kind of get a sense of, Oh, the unconscious levels of holding here. And without judgment, you know, just use the breath itself to be with. Right? Part of what we're trying to do is in this descent process, learn to breathe and be with, breathe with. I think the image that comes to my mind is almost like the, you know, the breathing in the process of giving birth, right? And during labor pains, we were instructed to breathe. And so in the same way, we, we want to breathe with what's happening. And that can be, you know, an intense moment in our, our life, or it can be as we tune in to our meditation and just notice what's alive in us and what's, you know, tense or dense or stuck or heavy. And, you know, interestingly, Libra, right, is this image of the scales, right? And and in ancient Egypt, those scales were the also about this process of transformation and, and the changing of the... Uh, the life, you know, from from this life into another life and this weighing of the heart at this time. And this was also part of the initiation rituals, which also were a kind of facing of the death again. So the saying was, you know, that, that, that your heart needed to weigh less than a feather in order for you to continue into the deeper mysteries. And if your heart was too heavy... And not even too heavy, but even heavy in the littlest bit because it needs to be lighter than a feather, right? Then you're carrying something too much to allow you to to go through in a sense. And so we have to learn how to be with what that is in a way that can help it release and transform. So as we breathe, you know, feel your attention pouring into this container, this moment, and feel your body. And notice that you have nowhere else to go, nothing to accomplish. And give yourself the gift of being fully present 
right here. And go ahead and take three deep breaths. Hold the breath all the way in and, and hold that inhalation for a while, as long as you can. And then letting go and then holding out the breath on the exhalation for as long as you can. And then breathing fully in again three times at your own pace. And notice the nuance of your breath as you inhale. Hold. Exhale. And hold. Especially noticing the empty space of the out-breath or the pause between the breath. And as you breathe, feel your attention more solidly pouring into the container of this moment. And feeling the presence of the energy in your body. Just being fully with yourself. So the path of descent is very real and unusual, and usually can be painful, but something else is equally true. Love is both who we are and who we are still becoming. And these are words from Richard Rohr again. Like a sunflower seed that becomes its own sunflower. It seems to be a fully cooperative effort and according to St. Paul, in my limited experience too, God never coerces us toward life or love. God seduces us. And whoever this God is, he or she is utterly free. Love cannot happen in any other way. Love flourishes inside freedom and then increases that freedom even more. We are all allowed to ride love and love's wonderful mystery for a few years until life and love reveal themselves as the same thing, which is the final and full message of Easter, the risen Christ, life morphing into a love that is beyond space and time. God literally breathes shalom, peace, and forgiveness into the universal air. We get to add our own finishing touches of love, our own life breath, to the great breath. And then we return the completed package to its maker in a brand new but also same form. I believe the meaning of the resurrection of Jesus is summed up in the climatic line from the Song of Songs, Love is Stronger Than Death. So, in paying attention to breath as well, another interesting metaphor arises out of our news, out of our experience of this moment. And I want to preface it a little bit by just, you know, reminding us that, uh, you know, those of us that work with people, and most of us do in one way or another, sort of, we may unconsciously do this, but we, when we're relating, we're naturally matching our breathing with each other. We're mirroring each other. And the heart actually also it tends to um, beat in union with other heartbeats. So, uh, and then we're also Libra. It's a sign of relationship, right? Of of being together, of breathing together. So, uh, to to breathe with and through the pain of yourself is another importance of this breathing. We're coming to a break again. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about um, this event in our current history that is a good metaphor this is darlene rollins coming to you from earth walk ways this is your host of and coming to you from bbm global network <laughs> mike zorick a three-time california state champion in greco-roman wrestling at 114 pounds mike blind since birth 
was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veteran spokestyle wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality? But it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating. Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic. On the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Welcome back to Earth Walkways. This is your host, Darlene Rollins, coming to you from BBM Global Network. And we're sort of exploring this idea that our unfolding reality is is mythic, is uh, metaphoric is initiatory, right? And uh, the medicine wheel is is teaching us out of this present moment and in this collective global kind of experience. Uh, we're learning a lot of new things, and a lot of the old things are being uh, shaken and transformed. So we're still living in a lot of uncertainty, learning how to balance and be with that, and learning to balance and be with. With, you know, going into the underworld, going into the dark side, uh, you know, when things are collapsing and, and uh, dying rather than uh, living and expanding, right? So it's, it's, again, not our favorite <laughs> part of life, but a part of what we're trying to do is recognize that it's all part of, part of the one process and part of the one love and that without it, um, life really cannot serve us in the way that it, it, it does. And so here we are, you know, talking about um, the breath again as uh, sort of being called forth of the metaphors of these times through uh, being in the air sign of Libra uh, with the full moon. And there's a kind of um, understanding of, you know, how all of this is connected, you know, with our lungs and our breath and uh, how breath is the kind of key to help us sort of row the boat through the difficult times and how we can be with and breathe through and go into through and, and out the other side uh, and our breath makes a huge difference and then you know it's also Libra is this you know relational kind of sign and I was sharing that uh, there's a, a recent kind of reality in our situation with patients using ventilators that is also you know such a metaphor so what I uh, heard and this was um, from my uh, trickster training trickster friend Caroline Casey um, you know that that there's a way that when people when patients are hooked up to a ventilator you know part of the reason why they're having so much trouble you know thinking about you know two people to a ventilator is is that that's this procedure is an incredibly delicate procedure that requires a great deal of training of the person doing the intubation 
And we, basically what they have to do is be able to very, very perfectly breathe with the person who is being intubated. And the whole procedure then is moved in, in the rhythm of the breathing. And, and if it doesn't happen that way, it can cause injury. <clears throat> and, of course, when two people are breathing at different rates, you know, it's like that this uh, is part of the difficulty, I guess, with more than one person on a ventilator. But you can see the metaphor here again, right? You know, this this ability to compassionately be with each other, breathe with ourselves, with our, each other, you know, uh, and, and using breath again in the scales of Libra, right, to lighten our heart, to make our heart light as a feather. And it's not to ignore the suffering, but it's using the pain in this way that we talked about in this session, you know, that that will make us stronger and make us more compassionate and um, hopefully uh, this way of holding space with and for ourselves, you know, will allow even the difficulties, the grief, the losses, right, to be passed through in some way. It doesn't mean our, you know, our grief doesn't happen. The heart being light as a feather is not that we don't feel sadness sometimes, but we don't, you know, get lost in the darkness. Right? So, breathing then is a practice of descent and being with what is what is is where we can sort of learn to breathe with and through all our moments and then interestingly the breath is the link between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic right the link between the inner and the outer so breath is this very important you know metaphor here for everything that we're working with so allow yourself moments just to breathe, to breathe in the spring, especially for the power of Mother Nature of vitamin N is something waiting for us to rediscover. We've sort of left this resource and, and it's, it's not, you know, using it up for making material things, but being with and breathing with nature so use this dawning new year to uh, help you, uh, teach you, console you, you know, let Mother Nature herself uh, demonstrate this always renewing, you know, capacity of hope and forward movement, even as she is being crucified in so many ways, you know, receive her beauty, you know, receive it like the rainbow that was placed in the sky to bring hope. Take in the beauty of spring. It has to be a backdrop to your descent. You know, if if fear and darkness and distrust is, is the backdrop to the descent, it can, you know, be much more, you know, threatening and difficult. So it is the love and the faith in creation that has nurtured and fulfilled us in so many ways and that allows us to dare believe in the resurrection, in the ultimate goodness that comes out of what seems to be death and the end of the world in various ways, right? So I know many people are maybe still believing that we will sometime soon return to an old normal and and I've always been amazed at how strongly we, we do maintain uh, old patterns and uh in my lifetime, how many times we've resuscitated the patient and, you know, sort of prolonged this journey. But I think it's good to some extent. It's right so that it can be accomplished gradually, proceed slowly, and in that way faith and love can be preserved. And I suspect now that Mother Nature is guiding us into a new relationship with her and with each other. And my, you know, prophecy here, I don't know if it's true or not, you know, we could could be completely different, but I'm sort of expecting that our next set of uh, shifts are going to come around our food security shocks and that that will be the next thing we face on a global level. And so I've been reading, you know, people are raising these flags uh, and alerting us to the need to kind of create 
creativity, resilience, restorative practices uh, in our local communities for um, that. And so interestingly, here we are at home, you know, maybe we can all grow gardens this year and get some practice in, right? So, uh, but it, it's really tragedy what's happened for also the, you know, mostly the local farmers who've really been hurt by this as the restaurants have, have shut down. So, um if you can also, you know, support this and support the government to do what they can to help. So, and in the meantime, you know, we can uh, sometimes get frustrated and upset when we, you know, realize how, you know, we could have, would have, should have, we knew about this beforehand, you know, we we failed to replenish the stocks, you know, all of these things can trigger us and, you know, feel, you know, like the real needs of real people are going unmet, and so it leaves us fearful, angry, and judgmental, and I, I don't think it's just a feeling, you know, I think it's true, but at some level, I think we need to recognize that, in crisis, it does take a while to, you know, kind of step up to the plate and often looks pretty messy. And, you know, maybe in our world today with so much polarization, it won't happen. But I know in World War Two, it took about three months, you know, in Great Britain. Right. And and at the same time, they were actually doing a kind of psychic defense thing and a psychic intelligence. So they had their uh, spiritual people, you know, trying to tune in. Um, so we're, we're getting close to our closing. We have a couple more minutes. And, and I just want to bring in this idea sort of when uh, we have these places where critique is appropriate, right? You know, we see something, you know, and we want to critique it. But rather than just staying in the harumphitude of being, you know, pissed off and sort of, uh, sort of somehow above, you know, looking down on, you know, others and the situation, right, uh, it, this is a, a trick that Caroline Casey offers, that we offer a, a practice of critique and then blessing, right? So we might notice something and we might name it and critique it, but then we follow that up with a blessing. So um, if we can, you know, imagine sort of may this event, whatever it is, you know, awaken us to the real values and love that is the God in each person. May this event awaken more of God's presence on earth and and may the fear and distrust of each other be overcome by the acts of love and care each one of us can offer. So we see the bad, but we bless it forward, right? And so you might explore that. And um, I want to just say together we can take the path of initiation and let go of this unknown and we'll learn to become happier in Mohoral in the process. So this is Earthwalk Ways. This is your host, Darlene Rollins, coming to you from BBM Global Network. See you in a couple of weeks. This has been Earthwalk Ways with your host, Darlene Rollins. Listen each week and connect to the natural world in a shamanic and mystical way. Here on Darlene Rollins, Earthwalk Ways. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.